welcome to Chess on Psychology. Hopefully you're having a good day. Um, today I wanted to talk a lot about scotch because it's one of those openings that some people really hate, some people really liked. And um, so I started working it, uh, for it years ago and I had some nice results and then I switched to Lopez and Fortnite and yeah a lot of different um, variables to just see what suits my style more so uh, today I want to show you some of my favorite games and um, obviously I got good results and obviously I had bad results in Scotch too uh, one fun fact for you chess history lovers uh, Kasparov used to be and mm, hopefully still is a very big scotch fan so um, if you want to play scotch and then you feel like on oh, but nobody really plays it look at Kasparov's games that's what I did and yeah we are upstairs today good eye yeah it was very nice I I like the change of scenery too okay so let's jump in the first game I want to show you is with one and only Tanya, Tanya Sachtev, and um, uh, this was a very interesting game. This was in like six years ago. Actually, this game happened in Iran, and I really like Tanya. She's very nice. She comes here often too, so, well, um, okay, let me show you how it went. Um, I remember that I prepared a lot for this specific game and I thought she would play like French or Karokan just because it wasn't my uh, strongest suit and then uh, we got into this position and yeah so uh, usually with e5 and queen e7 queen e2 is the normal way to play it there are other ways to play it too like I've played around with queen e2 earlier just to try and um, be a little tricky for my opponents and sometimes they don't play like queen e7 sometimes they play like bishop c5 and now e5 no more queen e7 so they would have to start moving the knight around so that's something if you want to be a little bit tricky um, but I was comfortable playing what I knew so here, uh, there are a lot of different lines, but g6 is uh, one of the main lines and the most played ones. g5, when she played g5, <laughs> fun fact, that was out of theory. Um, the main thing that kind of like the light that went off on in my brain was this f5 square. I just really wanted to see if I could somehow get this knight to f5. And um, so that's something that I was trying to do. So yeah, hopefully uh, I'm reading through the chats and I'm trying to, yeah. Whoa, a lot of different, a lot of interesting um, comments and okay, the chat is very active. Glad about that. All right, so I tried to just play normal stuff that I knew and uh, got my knight out. She did this knight before. And so let's say white to move. What do you want to do here? Just give me a few ideas on how you would want to proceed. Um, for you Lopez lovers, I did talk about Lopez, uh, my experience with Lopez earlier um, last week or the one before that. So feel free to check that one out too. Uh, I'm hoping to get through many games as possible today to try and cover different variations um, knight uh, king e3 well john you are funny nope um, knight f3 no you kind of want to get the knight to g3 so that that was the idea i wanted to just simply get my knight out especially because this is coming so you gotta move the knight anyways so um, knight f3 there's always g4s then what would you do with the knight so let's say you play knight f3 g4 your knight doesn't really have anywhere to go you come to d4 you lose this guy too so uh, knight f3 would not be the best one I just went with knight e4 i think queen e4 also could be um very reasonable because if it's white too you're trying a3 again whoops not that now white might, might want to play a3 
But I think queen e4, um, I think what I was a little bit afraid of was something with like d5 or um, then take, take, uh, take with something and then take back. Uh, I think I was a little afraid of d5s and if you try en passant it doesn't work too because there's this check at the end uh, or also <laughs> this at the end. So a lot of different um, stuff to watch out for, a lot of different dropping pieces. So queen e4 would just, I thought it would just make my position a little um, sadder. So I just went with knight e4. And after knight e4, yeah, the the um, little dirty trick was if you take, I take, you t whoops, nope, no d5, Jesus, why is my mouse jumpy today? I would have this knight in f6 and I would pick up here queen. So that was my little um, somewhat of a trick that I tried to pull off. Obviously she saw it. And, um, but yeah, good, good eye, uh, Jaroslav. Yeah, so um, after knight e4, my idea was pretty simple. I am going for this lovely square. She did the long castle. I did my knight g3 because, um, I mean, if a3 now, then I think this is very, very doable. Take, take. Now attacking the rook. So um, I don't really know how to get my kingside pieces out. So that's going to be more pleasant for black. So I did my knight g3. Knight f5. I got that piece. I did my a3. Knight went to d5. Now what do you think white should do? When did Tanya become an IM? I have no clue, but I do think she was an IM when I was playing with her. So it's been a long time. I'm sure you can check it up on FIDE. If we're betting, I would say 2010. Let's go with 2010. G3, uh, I think, um, I think my biggest problem was that, um, I wasn't really afraid of knight f4, whoops, not going to do that, uh, however, I was a little bit afraid of something like d6, or like with f6, so that's something that I was worried about, so, um, g3, I think g3 is val. uh, doable, especially because if you play d6, I might be able to give you a check and pick this guy up. If you play f6, however, now it's getting a little annoying, because if I just bring my bishop out, you just take on e5, castle, and um, now the king is also pretty weak, just like a direct attack coming. So um, g3, doable, I think. But I decided to go with queen d2. Okay, I see. Queen d2? Yeah, I see queen d2 in the chat too. Great. So after queen d2, do you think black has any um, tactics? Any? What do you think black should do? So black to move right now. What do you think black should do? Twenty-eight. All right, well, I was close. I said 2010. Oh, well, uh, it's black to move, Jay. Uh, Curtis, do you need to know all variations to become a chess master? Um, not necessarily. It's more like understanding where the pieces belong and being able to just um, play good chess. I don't know all the variations. You can show me some deep line in even scotch, and I would know that this is like a scotch position, but I wouldn't know what to do in this. Yeah, rook e5 would be ba rook, e rook e5 would actually give black um, some edge. Well, I wouldn't take it because if I take queen takes, and then it's just horrible over here. So my idea was if you take rook e5, I'll play king d1. If you play knight f4, well now I take. I'll play rook a2, and it's like a very uncomfortable position, but I was hoping that I would be able to get something out of it. 
And because um, if you don't play knight f4, I'm going to pick up this knight. Oh, whoops. I'm going to pick up this knight, attack this guy. This guy is pinned. So it would be quite uncomfortable for black. That's why it's, uh, it was nice for... Um, it was nice to try and just take on e5 to make my life a little more um, uncomfortable. But she didn't. She played knight f4. Now I got my castle. She got her knight back to e6. I'm not entirely sure why knight e6. I assume because e6 is coming up. And now white to move. What do you want to do? White's, uh, white's getting uh, better and better. So um, what do you want to do? Any kind of black tea would do. Thank you. Why not? Uh, sure, why not? Thank you. So, let's see. Anything for white? Queen a5. Yeah, queen a5 would be really nice. I did do the queen a5. And so the idea is pretty simple. You move this, I'm going to pick up pawn, and this pawn is going to be very monstrous. So what do you think black should do? Do you see any like mini tactics or something for black? Um, so uh, we do want to get this queen b4, and we do want a uh, queen a5, thank you. And we do want to do our best to try and keep the queen on a5. Um, king b7, well, I think the problem with king b7 is that, well, I'm thinking this bishop is really misplaced here, so if I could just play b5 before, before b5 and the bishop is falling. So I don't think king b7 works. Anything a little trickier? King b8, yeah, Jay, you are right. King goes to b8. The idea is uh, very um, still tricky. You gotta come back and knight b3 forks and gets your queen. Right? Yeah. You are, yeah, you guys see it. Great. Lovely. So let's say, so king b8, you can't take on a6. Uh, so you're white, how can you try and advance your position? You, you see that you have advantage, um, slight but still advantage, spatial advantage, you have two bishops, uh, you have better, a lot of better space. So how do you want to um, get better as white as well? How can you make progress? Thank you guys for putting full lines. So, all right. White to move. How do you want to progress? There is not much tactic here. It's more like a nice balance between dynamic and just, let's call it maneuvering. Yeah, this did happen in the, go in the game. It was pretty cool too. So do you see any way to try and bring more pieces maybe? Yeah, king b1. Whoa, you guys are on fire. Um, I think b4 might be interesting, but it's kind of like, it feels like I'm trapping my own queen. So um, king b1 is better because, so ideally um, you would want to try and play c5 at some point and maybe try and get this rook up here if possible. So, now king b1, now I want to take on a6, because no more knight c5, knight b3, right? So you move the king to b1, you have this deadly threat of picking up a piece. So she just went back with her bishop, now we push c5. c5, so the knight can't come in, the bishop is open, bishop c4, rook c1, rook c4, it's a nice flow. Queen f8, attacking the pawn, 
rook c1, now rook c4, rook a4 might be coming up. So she just played king a8. Keep in mind, if I try to play rook c4, let's say she does whatever, I play rook a4, there's always queen c5. So I can't do that just yet. So now another question for my viewers. White to move, how do you want to get more pieces to come in the attack? Think about how this rook is not working maybe, or how this bishop is working, but maybe could be a little better placed, or is this bishop good here, you want to leave it there? Ooh, bad bishops, now we're talking about good bishops, next one, mm -hmm. we have bad bishops, haha. <laughs> Yeah, h4. Good one, guys. So, a little fun story about how I started to really like this h4 stuff. Um, I remember when I was just beginning to up my level in chess, I would not move my a and h pawn. I just wanted to keep them there. I don't know why. It, I don't have my logic from then with me. <laughs> but I remember I saw a bunch of Magnus's game and I was like oh Magnus did this pushed this pawn and brought the rook and wow it actually works So I started to actually really like it and then I did it in a few games just for no reason like Instead of castling I put my king on g1 and just played h4 rook h3 I mean it worked and then the idea saved me a few times in serious rated uh, games that I was hunting down rating and norms so Here's an idea, but yeah, so finally I like this h4, I did this h4, so the idea is pretty simple, if you take it, it is going to be very uncomfortable, um, I don't actually see how white, how black could try and stop this, so she shouldn't take, and she didn't. So she played d6, I think it was her best defense as well, because now if I try and take anything, if I start eating pawns, now black can uh, get some room to breathe and defend here, it's it's gonna be easier. So as white it's crucial not to touch these pawns. And like these kind of pawn structure, especially without the queens on board, is something that you see a lot in Scotch games, in Kasparov games. So um, feel free to look a little bit more deeply on that and get a better understanding of the pawn structure because like with d6 or sometimes when the pawn is on d5, you usually as white don't want to exchange it up, you don't want to take it because it would kind of just fix all black, black pawn structure problems and spatial problems so keep that in mind too oh hello come welcome welcome you're just getting in for the interesting parts so I just ate that um, pawn over on g5 and she did knight c5, knight c5 is good bringing nine more pieces to protect uh, the poor king over here, so white to move, now what do you want to do? You see how nice the attack is, right? Just try and organize a better, um, I like to call it organizing symphony when you're attacking your opponent, so yeah, organize the symphony, tell me where you want the bishops, rooks, and preferably just give me the move or the candidate moves that you would uh, make in your game. Sack the bishop, a6, oh god, already p giving up pieces? No, you still have a lot of improvement to do. I mean, sacrificing is always worth mentioning and worth looking at, but definitely easier to, yep, Yaroslav, you're right, bishop d4, thank you. Yeah, exactly, you're daring that knight to move. Good, you're putting pressure. You're also avoiding any kind of other movement with this d6 pawn, with this knight, you just paralyze all of these pieces right here. Good job, bishop d4. So she realized that her position, like it's just not gonna get any better and I'm not willing to just sacrifice weird stuff yet, just yet. So she played queen g8. So queen g8 is going for g5, right? Um, so it's kind of avoiding any kind of rook h4 ideas. I, th I remember I thought about something with bishop e3 but then there are rook e5 ideas and we would want to avoid those. So you want this bishop to stay on d4, you don't know what to do with this rook just yet. Bishop on f1 is good. Um, I think if it was me right now, I might have tried something with like 
f4 maybe but uh, back then me i tried something a little just more simpler so white to move how do you want to work it um i have a question about isn't knight b3 a fork well it is a fork but if you took knight on b3 a7 is falling and mate so be careful with that yeah b4 i think b4 should be good enough um f4 i think it's also worth looking at just because it kind of ties black's hands up a little bit more but b4 should be just enough to win she gave a check king up she did queen e4 now white to move uh try and give me a little more precise moves on how you would want to continue you do you want to just take it over on c5 or basically the question is do you want to take on c5 or do you want to play something like bishop e3 to save your bishop rook c4 um maybe yeah rook c4 i think yeah uh the only thing with rook c4 to maybe watch out for would be um if there was any pins but i don't really see any pins right now maybe something with like bishop a6 so if you take over here take on here and uh, it's check you gotta take and then d4 falls so you gotta probably be careful with something like bishop a6 if you play rook c4 so what else I have a question about where war is well um the club is still uh, the city is still on lo um lockdown for social distancing so very few of us come in but if i'm not wrong the uh, so the uh, city is starting to slowly open back up from monday i don't know if the club is going to be open to public i don't have that information but I hope that answers your question. Um, I actually can read that alphabet. Fude um, Dudu, I am answering you. Hopefully, I pronounce your name correct too. Yeah, all right. So, we want to go with Bishop E3. Good choice. Good. Keep your position steady. Don't rush into anything. Bishop E3 is the best one. And um, so, after Bishop E3, she realized that this guy this knight is falling and there's nothing she can do so she tries to um create some sort of um anything to keep the position going and make it a little trickier so she played bishop c8 her idea was quite simple if i take over here now she has check i would have to move the king somewhere she would create another check and um it would just at least of all make my position very uncomfortable so um now she wants to play bishop e6 what do we do um exchanging bishop for about eh, well it's not more of an exchange it's more of a um, trying to eat the free piece so there was a question about the crooks c4 bishop a6 oh yeah um if rook c4 bishop a6 then rook c5 bc5 or um rook c5 well yeah if rook c5 bc5 queen c5 that wins good eye but i was thinking if um Hold on, but if dc5, queen c5, d4 is falling, isn't it? All right, R bishop c4 in this position, you guys are correct. Good job. Just block the um, bishop e6. Very nice. I'm going to just jump back to the rook c4 because there was a question about it. Back here, instead of bishop e3, if rook c4, bishop a6. If you, um, you are talking about rook takes c5, bc5, queen c5 this uh, queen d4 and it kind of stops it a little bit i mean this is a still uh, advantageous for white sort of but they're queen b6 and um you don't no this is not sorry it's not advantage you would kind of blow your advantage so there could be bishop c5 but then you would be giving different kind of checks and no let's not do that um 
Rook C4. So the biggest problem with Rook C4 is you would give your opponent chance to create complications with Bishop A6. So don't go for it. So do this Bishop E3. Do this Bishop C4. Avoid any chance of your opponent trying to get um, freaky ideas. Now this knight still can't move. You touch the knight a7 mate, right? So she tried to play something with rook takes e5. So when I take, she would try to create something with like bishop f5, any kind of chance uh, to give any sort of check. And uh, I just took on c7, simply attacking the rook. Um, and now I just really wanted to keep it simple and I didn't want to give any chances so I just played rook c3. My idea was to try and just play rook b3 maybe. Um, not necessarily even rook b3, just take over here. I think mm, I was afraid of um, something like... Mm, does rook b1 work with black? Rook b1 take, maybe queen c2 check, up check. I don't remember why I didn't just take over d6. Um, because black doesn't really have any checks at the moment. So uh, rook c3 wasn't necessary, but it was definitely beautiful to just avoid any kind of other checks or possibilities. Yeah, and um, she took here, I played rook e1 just not willing to give up my pieces. And I finally took over here, attacking that. And um, she resigned here because, well, um, I have a, one more piece attacking uh, f5, rook b3 coming up. Let's say you play something like bishop g6. Now I have the um, rook b3 least of all. I'm pretty sure there are other stuff too. So yeah. This was a very nice game. It was a very motivational game for me too. I do think I scored a WIM norm in that tournament because 2014-15 I was still hunting down WIM norms. So yeah, this was the first game I wanted to share with you. Um, hopefully you guys liked it because it was one of my in most interesting games too just because it just felt like lots of the moves that I would do now, I did back then too. So it just felt like a sort of, um, I've reached some sort of some level of chess maturity. So I really like that. Okay, so this was the first game I wanted to show you. Let's move on to the, whoops, that was a loud computer. So I don't know how much you see this computer, but this is one of those big laptops with a huge screen. I actually have to look like this to find left and right <laughs> all right um let's see uh give me a second to see if this is a better one or actually yeah this is interesting okay so remember how i was talking about um you having the chance to play um queen e2 earlier before e5 so i want to show you in this game so yeah I uh, remember, yeah, this was actually in Reykjavik 2017, I, my last European tournaments, uh, I can't wait to go play more tournaments in Europe, but, well, there are no tournaments to play anywhere right now, <laughs> but yeah, um, so I, like, 2017, I played lots and lots of Fortnite, and I remember in this game, my opponent was lower rated than me, but he was still a good opponent, and I was just sick of Scott, uh, sick of Fortnite. I didn't want to play it anymore, cause I oh yeah in Reykjavik, no not in Reykjavik. I didn't play. I didn't get a chance to play much Fortnite in Reykjavik, but um, so I wanted to just go with um, Scotch and just yeah. So another fun fact about my this specific opponent, um, Mark Polotkin. Uh, I remember he's. I played with his father in last round of Gibraltar and I had a worse position but it ended in a draw so when I saw his name Plotin I was like I th didn't I play this opponent like last month or something and I looked him up and I was like oh no that's his father so that was also funny <laughs> I I did this thing that I uh, looked up his father and prepared against his father as well <laughs> so yeah that's the backstory for this lovely game 
And anyways, so I remember that um, I didn't want to play like E5. I didn't want to go for the main lines because I remember I when I looked at his father's game, I didn't like what he played, but that's, <laughs> yeah. I remember his um, the game that I had with his father, he played uh, Petrov, so I expected Petrov mainly, but well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, queen e2. I played this queen earlier, queen e2, to try, to try and see if I can be tricky. <laughs> because um, I think bishop c5 is also a good move. And there's like a bishop b4, queen e7. There are a lot of different moves. And he just went with queen e7. So that gave me an idea that he was prepared against what, yeah, e5. So I wanted to avoid that. Just a little psychology, throwing it in there about um, how I was thinking about it in the game, just trying to not get into my opponent's, um, my opponent's um, preparation. Yeah. All right, so I did this knight c3 and I got this a3 because I just didn't want this bishop before. And um, so I remember I've looked up some stuff with eventually trying to play knight a4 and pick up the two bishop but um, it wasn't the right time at this moment so I was just trying to see if I can try and do something with knight a4 or not uh, but well here's an idea out there there's a lot of uh, ideas with knight a4 and trying to pick the bishop up in scotch so keep that in mind will you ever cover some games in sketch gambit um, Scotch Gambit, I did cover some games with um, from Blackside last week, just throwing some ideas, but probably why not? All right, so I just went with Bishop e3 mainly because I was hoping he would take it, and I would just take with the queen, and I could potentially think about just getting this bishop out. Now um, this is a good bishop, unlike the lesson from Dennis Barr is coming up. <laughs> This is a good bishop because, well, I kind of know what do I want to do with it. I'm going to place it in d3, maybe c4 someday, and it's going to just, it has good um, diagonals. Whereas this bishop, it's just, it's so hard to f picture this bishop in an uh, ideal position. So, uh, I just went with queen e3 and just opening my bishop up. I do think that here bishop b6 would have been a smarter choice. Because now I'm like, well, I don't want to take that because you take it with a and then bishop a6s are coming up because like take, take, bishop a6 could be coming up. So I wouldn't want to do that. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to, um, after bishop b6, I don't know what would I do I've done. I think something like um, g3, might be, but knight e4 take tactics, take b6, take here. I don't know. g3 would just kind of hung uh, this pawn. Um, there is a slight chance to just try and relocate the bishop again, but let's just say I am glad he did not play <sighs> bishop b6. And finally, he got his d5, and I no, no taking on d5 because you're fixing your opponent's pawn structure, even though something with bishop b5 would have been interesting, but um, this would just fix the opponent's pawn structure. So, bishop d3, castle, castle, rook e8, putting more pressure, bringing out the other rook, and so right now, white has a slight edge, but it's nothing, um, like, it's not a determining advantage, it's just white pieces are slightly better positions. So, white to move, how do you want to proceed? Oh yeah, last week was uh, Ray Lopez. Um, maybe uh, it would most likely be the week before that, that we talked about um, Italian from black side and, right? Yeah, the weeks are flying by. <laughs> And another good news, while you guys are thinking about what whites to do, I would like to brag about the fact that I got A in organic chemistry. <laughs> it's been killing me all semester, and I've been whining and venting about it on our streams nonstop. So I would like to give everybody a piece of 
Thank you, thank you. I yeah. wish there was like a congratulation button that I would press right then and it would be poo. So yeah, thank you for listening to me and keeping up with me this semester. All right, E5, yeah, you guys are right, E5. So the idea of knight A4 is definitely interesting and something that I would definitely look into that as well. But right now this E4 pawn is getting weak and you don't want to be forced to take it. So e5 is the move you should look at. Yeah, knight, d, knight g4, and um, I have a suggestion about queen g3. Queen g3 is nice, but queen d4 is also good, because let's say if you were like queen h3 is also interesting, and now because if take, then this doesn't work, um, well, because of here. But then like something like uh, g6. And yeah, I would definitely go with f4. So I think queen h3 was something that I considered in the game, but I wasn't so sure about. So I just went with keeping my queen in center. And yeah, well, thank you. I am not a, uh, well, I am senior to be. Uh, all right. So, he just went with f6 because, well, it doesn't work to take now. Uh, there are f4s, I believe. Yeah. So, um, f6 is what he went for. And, okay, now, uh, white to move. Do you think there is any way to try and persuade him to take some stuff over here, maybe? Thank you, thank you for all of your congratulations and um, yeah, it's it's been a rough semester. Well, mm, we're not really going for um, f six. Well, mm, I mean, he already played f six. She, uh, he, sorry, he already did play f6, so I couldn't stop him from that. Take f1, oh, be careful, e1. We don't want to give that up. h3, yeah, all right, h3 is good. I'm glad you guys are keeping up. h3, you're pushing the knight. If the knight goes to h6, now this knight is in a bad place. You could think about f4, you could just think about taking. And if take, 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 just king goes up, and now this is, um, this is very doable. I think I would think uh, more deep and go for this actually. So, yeah. Um, she, uh, he just took knight takes e5. Now, uh, white to move, do you think f4 is good? And if you do play f4, do you see any way for black to um, try and get out of it? Because f4 seems like you're picking up a piece, right? But the question is, are you? This game wasn't actually much sacrificial. It was, uh, from what I remember, it, it went to the end game and um, it got interesting there. The queen is not necess it, it's not like if the queen is better than two rooks, it's more about the position and in that specific position black king would have been really weak and I, I would like to try that all right so um, look at let's look at f4 the thing is with f4 if black doesn't do anything I'm just picking up the piece right so but black's best move is c5 which he did do because if not queen comes back to f2 there's knight d3 you take that take that take that or I'm um, sorry Take that, take, 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 and you didn't really win anything, and it's um, not very pleasant. So queen c5 is kind of forced. Now knight takes d3. Um, knight takes d3. If you take, again, it's the same story, just minus a um, piece. So you kind of, after knight d3, you do have to take it back. And now uh, he did have the chance to try and sacrifice but I think the problem was how the weak d5 is and he didn't want that 
because um, I think something like rook e8, give this check, bishop e6, and this is still playable for both sides, but I'm comfortable with my position. I don't know how comfortable he would be, but it's definitely like it's playable for both sides. It's still a fair fight. So, um, yeah, c5 was a nice escape for black. So now he just went with queen b6. I kind of have to take it, take, and I took this guy. So I managed to get one more pawn in an end game. But the, the real question is that, well, rook d8, what do you want to do with white? Because you touch the knight, let's say you play something like knight c3, there's always a um, bishop move and your pawn is, seems to be falling. Or if you take, or he can take first, take and just bishop f5 and d3 is still seems to be falling, right? So we got to this end game, he played rook d8. I decided to play d4, to just wait it out and see what he wants to do. If you play like bishop b5, I might have some chances with knight c3 and try and keep my pawn. But um, the problem is he would, uh, his best chance is to take on e1 and take on h3. Now, if I try to play it a little tricky and give like some checks and take that, there is rook e8. And this pawn in the game is actually okay for black. Yeah, so that's something to that slipped my mind. <coughs> Sorry, I thought I covered the mic. Did I? Oh god, I did my best. Sorry. Uh, oh god, <laughs> sorry for your ears. <laughs> well, you didn't start, it's not bleeding, so I guess you're fine. <laughs> right. All right, great. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, sorry for everyone's ears. And um, okay, so I did this d4 to try and keep it tricky. And um, he just didn't do this tricky one, bishop h3. So he just went with king f7 first because of um, this knight e7. He thought that it's a little bit uncomfortable. And I think he also missed the fact that the pawn and game would be comfortable for black. So, hi Martin. All right, so uh, he played king f7, and after king f7, um, I just I was just keeping my um, I was just trying to keep my pawn as best as I can, and I just came back with the knight. My idea was if you touch this bishop, I'm going to do everything I can to keep my pawn because that pawn is how I have a chance to win. So he played b5 to try and um, make keep it still uncomfortable for me and okay take take rook d1 defending it still trying to pull some tricks off bringing the king bringing the king and all right it is white to move do you see any fun tricks How much longer do we have um, until this game ends? So I would say five, ten minutes, something like that. Yeah. Guys, I appreciate your corona humor, but it's not as fun as uh, you think it is. <laughs> but thank you for your concerns. I am healthy last time I checked. So what do you want to do here with white? Any um, fun tricks? No fun tricks? Knight c3. All right, so the thing is, if you do play knight c3, you're kind of just inviting the king to come to c4. So it's better to try. Oh, yeah, jc, it's good one. Rook c1, nice fill. You play your rook to c1, and you are doing this tiny trick you got your king in, you pushed this king away, and now you are looking at some lovely edible pawns. Rook b8 to keep the pawn. Now you bring your king back to d3 to avoid this kind of checks. And I played f5 because I wanted to just gain the space and some tempi for future if needed. And um, But this b4 would have been stronger. b4 and um, I had clear advantage. 
because now this rook has to stay here and defend this pawn and f5 could come next so the, um, f b4 would have been more precise but f5 is also um, advantageous i just um i'll just play it around a little with which pawn to push and i got my king up to c4 and the, ne the rest is pretty easy. You are just going to bring your king back um, for up and attack the rook like this. Eat that pawn. And <clears throat> push that pawn. And um, so now a question for you guys. Black to move, what do you want to do? Do you want to play, you want to take the pawn or do you want to try your chances with let's say rook d3? Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Marcus. Very nice. I'll try to cover more scotch next week with bishop c5s and some of the sidelines too. I'll try and find some good Kasparov games too. Hopefully it can be a nice repertoire. So um, in the game he took on h3 but i think rook d3 might have made it slightly trickier but i i mean white has clear advantage now um because i could just even push and just play king b3 but more precise would be to simply play king c4 and protect my pawn and just um push the pawn so that's something um is rook a1 any good i mean uh, it's doable, but I don't really see how it would benefit you because I can just push on a5 or um, I think something like rook c5 also very doable and I'm just gonna keep bringing my king up and just try and protect it so that would be the simplest idea um, so after take I started pushing pushing king up check and i ate that pawn because i wanted to keep protecting my g4 pawn and he tried to cut my uh my king went for some more edibles more edibles and so this is there anyone here who thinks um this end game is a draw you know the fun cliche of Rook end games are always draw. Yeah, I agree. This is not defendable. Yeah. Very well said, uh, Jaroslav. Yeah, I'm your B. Yeah, I played with them both. I have one and a half score. We're one and a half half with Plotkin family. All right, um, so, okay, um, let's say he tries to play king c7. Now I have rook f8 and I'm just going to keep pushing this and black doesn't even have any checks to stop that. So he tried to rook g1 to try and create the, some decent checks, hopefully. So my idea is if you keep giving me checks, I am going to run with my king to f6. And I did. Um, whoops. Oh, no, I gave it up. Nope, I didn't. Sorry. So he got his king up. I got my rook ready for queening. He get check, I run. Check, I run. Check. Well, sorry, no check. Because if you check, I run over here. Or e2. And the fun fact is if you go rook a1, now I'm going to play a7. Because if you check, if you take, I have check and take, take. And this is a lovely winning pawn end game, right? I would refer you to my um, king and pawn warfare previous classes for pawn end games. All right, so uh, he tried with king b6 to try his best and stop my pawn, giving check. 
king up and now I am still going to bring this king and try and push the pawn. So my idea was quite clear. So he tried more some checks. I mean, if he tried some checks, oh my God, come on mouse. There we go. If some checks, just king f6. And I mean, this is just really lost. You move the rook and I just push the king back to e7 and now my rook's defending my king and this is a full grown queen not a baby queen anymore <laughs> so um he went with rook a1 and i still did the same idea with king f6 and king e7 so i got my king b behind my rook so it avoids the checks his rook is uh, busy looking at my pawn and defending this pawn and this pawn is about to uh, get his coronation so, he tried rook c1, just because now if a7, there's rook c1, I'm picking this one up. So, um, I just gave a check, f6, now f7 is coming up. Now you close it up, and you just simply push. There are no more checks, nothing, and he pulled one last trick with taking over here. Because if I queen now, there is check and take on a8, which was kind of actually interesting because he fought until last minute. And um, I just did this rook e7 check, queen and rook e8. And he resigned. And yeah, this, is, this was a very fun game that I wanted to show you guys. So that, those are just two very um, broad ideas to look on scotch if your opponent plays knight f6. I tried them both, I like them both, I generally like scotch. Um, hopefully next week I'll do more sidelines with bishop c5 and maybe some of the lovely queenish fours that people keep playing on blitz. So yeah, hope you had fun, enjoy Dennis Boris's class right after this and see you later.